Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I hope that everybody is doing well during this quarantine. Um, I actually wanted to do today's video a little bit focusing on New York City um, as it holds a special place to my heart. I have a lot of friends that live there. Um, you know, I, my heart goes out to everyone that's affected by this pandemic or worldwide. But I really do feel very connected to New York. Um, and I do believe like I had a past life there as well. Um, so I've always been drawn to that, that place and California. Um, right now there's a lot going on in, um, in, in actual, um, New York. Um, a lot of people that are holding it together. Um, we just got reports, you know, that, uh, on the news, apparently, you know, that over 200 police officers have tested positive for coronavirus. Um, there's a lot of things that are not being said about this virus and how it is contracted. Um, and okay, so what I want to get into, and I have my notes here on my screen. Um, I'm sitting at my desk, but you can't see my computer, but there are some notes that I have there that I want to, um, share about this year. I'm going to talk about 2020 because I think it's so important to understand 2020. When we look at 2020 as a number, as a whole this year, you think of it as your vision, like 2020 vision, right? So when we are talking about uh, 2020 vision, we're talking about um, having a clear focus. This is a time, like I've said before in my other videos, of like a great awakening. It is a time, I just put my amber ring on. Uh, I love amber. Um, it's a time of waking up from this um, sleepness that we've been in, this sleep state. And it's been hindering us from progressing forward as individuals in the world. So this year itself is it, changing a, a very volatile world that we're living in right now. The world itself, the vibration that we've had for all these years is not a good vibration. Um, we've been elevating our vibration and our consciousness, a lot of us that are light workers, but then there's a lot of people that have been stuck in a trap zone, in a trap thing. Um, I'm going to be kind of going, weaving and bobbing in and out of the topics and stuff as I'm led by spirit. Let me go ahead and put some chapstick on because these lips, honey, they are going through it. So I use my Burt's Bees Wild Cherry. <laughs> I have to remind myself to constantly um, put chapstick on while I'm doing videos or work because I get so bogged down into doing work and stuff um, that I, you know, forget. So, um... But going back to, to 2020, uh, this is a very volatile year, okay? Some people are saying that this is a 22 since there's two twos in 2020, right? Two, zero, two, zero. That um, this is like a master year, but it doesn't fall into that category. This is a universal four uh, in numerology if we're talking about it. And, and I'm kind of looking at notes and things that I pulled from. Um, there's one, there's different uh, websites and, and whatnot that you can look this up. But if you like Google universal four year, you'll kind of understand exactly what I'm getting at. Um, this is a year of, you know, of a lot of changes. But why uh, has Italy been, why was China struck the hardest? Um, why has, um, Italy been struck the hardest in uh, places like New York City, okay? Um, when we start looking at everything that has been going on over the last couple of years, New York City has had a lot of tragedies itself. The last tragedy was 2,977, I believe, deaths in the 9-11 attack, okay? So 2,977 souls actually perished uh, in, in that, um, attack. So I'm here on my computer and I'm looking at it and that was a number seven. It, when you add the 2,977, it adds up to 25, but then you reduce that to a single number and that comes out to the number seven. In numerology, the number seven represents like change, spirituality. It was a very spiritual time for a lot of people that went through this tragedy, um, mourning the loss of their loved ones that perished in that attack um, and those that survived and carried on the burden and the guilt. Now, um, that happened in September of um, September 11th, 2001. So, right now we're 2020. Right now we're sitting at 18 years 18 years, okay, apart from 
where the attack happened in New York to where it is now. So when you take the number seven, uh, 18 and you reduce it into a single digit by adding both of those numbers, it equals a nine. Nine is a, a, a cycle of death, of completion. It is a cycle of an ending. So again, we're seeing a lot of, of um, definitive numbers in your numerology surrounding this. But why New York? Why has New York gone through a lot of, you know, bombs, terrorist attacks, and now uh, a plethora of the coronavirus and what it's doing to everybody there in New York? Uh, it is the epicenter of the United States, uh, and I hate to use that word. Um, first of all, the position of New York and how crowded it is uh, for this disease, they're, they're saying that it's not airborne that it's con contacted by, um, or contracted by, um, you know, you know, like, um, sneezing or the virus falls on certain, um, objects or on, on, on people, you know, that, you know, you could be a carrier. I really do feel that the way that it's set up the city itself with the brick buildings and stuff, and people can just, you know, I know that there's going to be a lot of people that kind of give this video a thumbs down or just does, don't agree. And I'm going to also put this on my Instagram channel because I feel like it's very important for me to talk about this um, when we think about it. I know it's it sounds silly. It may sound like a conspiracy theorist, but in reality, these are things that spirit is kind of like, if you're spiritually awoken, you will see these patterns and things. So the fact that, um, as I was saying, it, it's, I believe that since New York is structured the way it is, uh, very compacted, you know, in New York City right now, uh, in the whole state itself, but in mainly in New York City, we're seeing a lot of cases of this going on because it is being spread by the air as well. The people that are outside, this is why they want everybody inside contained in these places. But I also feel like in these apartments and stuff through the ventilators, through the, the ducts, people are getting that. And that's what I feel like the the people that are getting this, um, you know, the people that are responsible behind the movement of all of this that are trying to help people, I feel like they're not really realizing that if you live in like apartments that have several floors and they all share like a ventilated system, that this virus can be airborne and it, the you know people let's say you have two or three people of your family living in one floor uh, on you know in one apartment on a certain floor and they all have the coronavirus and they're staying inside their um and they don't even know they have it and they stay inside that apartment they're going to be getting all that that uh air and it's going to be uh, you know they're going to breathe all that air and oxygen and it goes through the ventilator system and i know that I, that may not sound like it it's correct or some people would think that it would be burned off the virus itself um, when it goes through an exhaust or whatever I'm not gonna get technical I'm not familiar with apartments and how they operate with our ventilation system but this is coming from spirit so I just have to say you know that I feel like that there is a correlation between this virus being airborne this is why also people they don't want people in um, in you know in places because a lot of places in new york the sun doesn't shine or doesn't hit the streets and stuff because the buildings are so tall and and people you know are, are out there so again um i i feel like also another contributing factor to this is that where new york is situated right now just like Il italy they have like a big body of water and so there is going to be a lot of these um water is a spiritual conduit it is something that draws energy um so some people could say this is spiritual warfare some people may not want to say that it's spiritual warfare but in reality i do feel like there is a correlation to that as well now in my research um i did see something here that um okay so number two uh, in 2020 when we're talking about the number 2020 or the year Number two is the is the feminine vibration. It is integration, sharing, and caring, building relationships, partnerships, psychic ability. Again, awakening through the divine feminine. I know that, that somebody said that this was not a year. I, I read a quote or something from a spiritual worker that said that this was not the year of the divine feminine, but of like human consciousness rising, blah, blah, blah. Whatever the situation is. It is the year of the Divine Feminine, and uh, it is a year where the Divine Feminine is rising up. Mother Earth is 
the divine feminine. It is what is being affected right now. Uh, and we all live on earth. So um, I do feel like that this following numerology, number zero is also a feminine vibration. The power of no thing to be patient while, while we wait in limbo for the start of new things. And we are starting a new era. I, I did talk to my friend, Megan, uh, mystic Michaela. Um, she's been on Bravo TV. Um, I, I love her to that. She's like a sister to me. Um, anyways, um, um, I was talking to her the other day and through a live chat that we were doing on my, on my Instagram channel, I had a, a live chat and I, I need to upload that episode, um, here as well, as well as my friend Pamela. She reminded me about the Twitch's talk podcast, which I thought I had uploaded. So I'll be uploading that, um, on my YouTube channel as well. But if you're watching this on Instagram or you're watching this on YouTube, regardless, I'm going to get to the point. And I talked, I spoke to Megan and we both said that the world is not going to go back to what it used to be. What we mean by that is that people are going to be going back to work. They're going to be going back to their normalities. There's going to be a, some form of normality, but um, as the whole collective, as the world itself, we're never going to go back to what we used to be. Not to make anyone afraid. Um, that's not in a negative thing. Sometimes change is forced upon us like it is now because it's going to usher in a new era, a new vibration, a new way of living and being, um, kind of balancing, uh, the, you know, the, the Holy grail, the, um, the alchemy of our bloodlines, the alchemy of our consciousness, all of this is, is coming to a formation and it's coming to, um, a, a birth, an essential new birth and a new reality for all of us. And when it, all of this is said and done, we're going to come out of this stronger. And a lot of the people that have passed from this are souls that perhaps were at a vibration that no that that was no longer aligned with this new reality, this new earth that we're in, this new dimension. Um, as we're raising up the dimensions and trying to find balance in the world. So I know this sounds very cryptic, but that that's the best way I, I can explain it. Um, I know that a lot of people are worried about, um, you know, what's going to happen because. Right now, all we hear about is death, 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 death. And when is it going to peak? When are people going to be able to go back? That's the major question. A lot of people, like scientists, they think that, you know, it's going to take time um, to go back. It could be several months. I honestly feel by summer, we will see some, um, some things coming back. Again, I'm not God. I can't, you know, say for sure. But I do feel like we are approaching uh, the height of it. And there is relief. Spirit keeps telling me that there is relief. They keep sharing with me, uh, May 17th. I don't know what May 17th has in store. When I get these information, get these, uh, snippets or insights, um, I'm not sure why, but they kept referring to May 17th, 2020 being an important date. And they also kept showing me July July the 8th of 2020. So uh, July 8th of 2020 and then May 17th of 2020. And these are going to be very important dates. I don't know. You may want to mark them on your calendar and then you can let me know because I tend to forget when I channel and get this information out to my viewers. I, I don't really hold on to that energy. I just kind of give out whatever and blurt out whatever I see and what I hear. Um, this is a year of an awakening. It is a, um, a new cycle, a new era that we're starting. Um, the message from spirit is to not lose hope. Okay. Cause a lot of you, I feel like are losing hope. This is a time of planting your seeds, planting your, your, um, the things that you want to accomplish as we go into the new world, into this new era. Uh, it is a time to spend time with your family to, um, you know, cherish what you have and what you've built so far. It's going to feel very uncomfortable because a lot of people up to this point haven't been, uh, able to sit down and really, um, 
deal with the issues at hand, the issues at home, the things that with their children. Um, they haven't had this connectedness that we are seeing now. And so it's kind of scary. It's kind of like a lot of people, if a lot of families right now are going to be experiencing highs and lows, especially if they have children that they're homeschooling. You have a mom and a dad that used to work out there and they're now in the same household. There's going to be a lot of tension that is there. And it, it, this is the reason why. It's because there is just so much going on uh, in the background. And with everything else uh, that is going on, it's causing a lot of this chaotic energy to take you know, take over. But um, like I said, uh, at the end of all of this, I do feel, let me just cut my, my radio in the background. I'm sorry, one second. Let me pause. I'm sorry, so now I have a train in the background <laughs> making noise. I live close to the railroad tracks, but uh, as I was saying, um, it is a time right now where um, a lot of things are going to happen. Um, in addition, a lot of people that went into relationships, um, you know, either this year or last year or the year before, or they've been married for quite some time, there's going to be a lot of couples. And I had an actual f um, follower, a ray of light, sent me an article. Um, so thank you. You know who you are, um, validating what I had said. I had talked about this. I had spoken about this in a previous video because I've done a lot about the coronavirus and, um, in it, I had said that I had saw that, um, that, you know, a lot of people are now going to be together and they're going to be stuck together. And what is going to happen is that a lot of, you're going to see a lot of divorces when, uh, this pandemic is kind of winding down. We're going to see a lot of people separating, people that were engaged, breaking up, people that um, thought that they were with the right person, um, leaving that person behind, not because they fell out of love because of this virus or this virus caused them to act irrational, but because um, this is a kind of like when think about it like when we were so fast paced and people were traveling having a good time hanging out going to stores didn't think about the virus anything of like you know nobody was preoccupied with their own personal lives as much as they are now um a lot of these couples you know they spent time together lovey-dovey maybe the weekends maybe after work they were together and you know they they went to parties and whatnot and they have never got to spend time with each other for 24 hours a day, uh, seven days a week, like a lot of people are doing now that they're quarantined. So now we're seeing a lot of these people dealing with that and they're not able to handle that vibration or they're seeing kind of like the mask that was put on them has been lifted and they're now seeing things for what they really are, the reality, the the you know what it, it what is really going on like what was flawed and what was damaged and um it's kind of like a shocker for some people they're not going to be able to handle the vibration domestic violence will go up um i still see riots happening i still see people trying to get together again in social crowds and things like that of that nature the scary reality of of it all is that like i said there's a lot of change coming and um when i talk about that i mean like in our consciousness in our hearts in our souls and so people are not going to necessarily be together this is not just in a romantic level but also friendships you're going to a lot of you out there that uh, vibrate at a very high level um and not at a low level you're going to notice that a lot of friendships dissolve people that you had in your life uh, before the virus um that maybe were very draining they're going to slowly dissipate and go away and i think this virus in itself it's also going to help a lot of people to wake up and see you know who has really picked up the phone and called them who has sent them a dm who has tech sent them a text message um and then a lot of people are not going to understand a lot of those people that were low vibrations in your life are not going to understand why they actually had to go away why uh, why you know you they think that you're the one that's distant but it's really not how that reality seems um and so we're going to see that. I also feel on a very, very um, strong level that there is going to be something eventually where um, organizations, there's going to be some something coming up in the future. Um, 
and and the spirit doesn't really like when I get revelations and things that are given to me it's kind of cryptic some people think that it makes no sense at all but they keep showing me that New York buildings are going to change a lot of these tall buildings are going to change I don't know what that means I don't know um to me change means like they're going to be structured differently spaced out I, I don't know how soon this is going to happen it could be 20 30 years from now but one of the things that i kept hearing and seeing was that uh the structures and the things around new york city in particular um were going to change the subway system is going to change how they clean the subways is going to change there's going to be a lot of that uh as well um, I do get that there is also going to be certain requirements, certain, um, you could call them ordinances or things that are passed within like these uh, breakout areas that have had high turn of breakout um, in New York City, like um, certain areas that have been hot, hot spots for people. There may be like certain laws passed where social distancing continues to be a thing of the present meaning that um, you, you can't have a group of more than 10 people in a certain spot confined to a certain, you know, sp space together uh, for quite some time. Um, when is the death going to stop in New York? I know that's a press pressing question. When is it going to stop worldwide? How soon? The, soon as, the, the question here is, is as soon as people can stay inside of their homes and also the government finding um, a way to kind of cure people. There was some thoughts or some thinking, something expressed about um, them using the someone that was infected, using their plasma or their cells, um, their blood in some way to find an antidote or to create an antidote as well. Just like they did with Ebola when people that had contracted Ebola, there were carriers, they actually used something about their plasma, whatnot, so we may see some developments of that as well. I do feel like there is, Spirit keeps showing me angels hovering over New York City uh, and Italy, which were major, major hot spots. I do feel like there is healing coming. I do feel like there is relief on the way. It's not gonna be as chaotic. I know it feels like the apocalypse. A lot of people are afraid that this is the end of the world, um, but it's not. And even given that California had an earthquake near San Diego, I believe, it was like a, on the Richter scale, it was like a force point something um, just the other day. You know, we're going to see a lot more earthquakes, like I had said before, uh, in California as well. There is so much that I, I want to say. There's so many predictions that I have that I'm working on my new book now. Um, hopefully, I'll have it out uh, sometime this year or next year. But um, I want you to stay positive. I want you to stay in prayer. Um, stay tuned to my Instagram live. If you don't follow me on Instagram, please follow me at Psychic Medium Ray. I'm going to be holding weekly. I'm going to try to hold weekly um, some praying sessions where I actually light a candle and pray for everybody affected by this coronavirus etc so um yeah um stay tuned i hope you liked this video and you enjoyed it if you did please give it a thumbs up also um leave a comment below you know on how what you're what you're doing if you're in new york city to stay positive i know it's a very um tough time guys it's a very a uh, scary time but again we need to see the positive in all this and know that the light of uh, our store workers, our nurses, our police officers, our firefighters, our uh, paramedics, our EMS, you know, all, all the people that are essential businesses that are working, our restaurants, um, you know, just be thankful for all that we have. It could be 10 times worse than what it is right now. And I know a lot of people think that this is really bad, and it really is, but it could be a lot worse. We need to raise the v vibration and, and be more thankful and grateful and send light right now if you're in new york city the last thing that you need to do is be scared or fearful because that is a low vibration and it's not going to send out any good vibration into the new york city and the areas that are being affected stay positive as as you can stay grounded centered be aware that when you go out you need to wear a mask 
limit your 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 outside time if you can and uh, be sure to say hi to people when you're cross you know walking in the street um, if you need to help someone, if you can contribute anything to help someone making masks or uh, making, you know, food or packaging things, getting rid of things that you don't need and donating them, do so because um, it's all about what we can do in the world. What I've been doing is doing a lot of these videos to help a lot of you. I have been doing uh, giveaways on my Instagram channel of my um, pen of some pendants um, as well and... Um, and just trying to to be positive and spread positive messages and kind of give you the insight that I get from spirit because I know a lot of you are asking for that so um, again I want to thank you so so much blessings and love and light have an amazing day or night wherever you are in the world